What is up guys, Alex from Creates here. Welcome back to another video. And today I'm doing my first impressions of the Personas Fader Port V2 from the perspective of a Pro Tools user. Now this is not talking about any other DAWs. This is my first impressions about how this thing works with Pro Tools specifically as a Pro Tools user. Frankly, this is the video that I wish I had when I was shopping for this thing because there are just a few different things that I would have liked to be aware of as a Pro Tools user about how this works with Pro Tools. Now, this is my first impressions. I've only been using this thing for about a week now. So this is not a review. These are just the things that popped up immediately that I'm like, I really wish somebody would have mentioned this in a video. Even if it's not a problem, it's just something that I would have liked to be aware of. If you are a Pro Tools user who uses a fader port and you know solutions or workarounds to what I'm about to talk about, please leave in the comments below and help us all out. I will try and keep the description of this video up to date with any amendments or workarounds that I find or that somebody recommends for this as I use this for a longer amount of time. Now, obviously this is made by Personas who make Studio One, which is a competitor DAW to Pro Tools. So obviously they want you to use Studio One and the features are integrated really, really well with Studio One. But this is specifically about Pro Tools because this thing says it's compatible with Pro Tools, which it is, but they don't really talk about the asterisks of how much stuff is actually compatible and how much is not, or the workflow when using it with Pro Tools. Now, right off the top, the reason for a lot of this incompatibility is the fact that Pro Tools and the Fader Port talk through the Huey protocol, which is an older protocol, and just, I don't think it's been updated a ton in the last little while, which is, I think, the root of many of these problems. Now, before I go into anything Pro Tools specific, I thought I should just mention the feel and build of this unit itself in case you're thinking about getting one. Personas did an amazing job. It's not too heavy, but it feels really good. It feels solid. It's more metallic on the front and then a plastic backing cover. It is bigger than I thought it would be. I don't know why, but it's, you know, a bit bigger than the size of my hand kind of thing. The buttons are a rubbery feel. They feel really good. And when you press them, you really feel the tactile response. The fader feels great. I like the size of the fader itself. I just don't know why the unit has to have such big bezels around the buttons. It just seems a little bit overkill and could have, they could have probably gotten away with a little smaller, but anyway, it just takes up a lot of room on my desk that I don't feel is necessary. The reason I got this thing in the first place is because I wanted a tactical motorized fader to write automation from time to time. When I want to, I don't want to be using a touch screen. So that's why I got this thing. If I could have gotten a unit with literally just the fader, I probably would have because I don't actually care about most of the other functionality in this. But now that I have it and there are other buttons and it's taking up so much real estate on my desk, I might as well use it. The one weird thing that I found is a lot of the buttons have a secondary functionality that you access using the shift key, but the shift key is up at the top corner of the unit. Like you have to reach over all the buttons to hit the shift key and then go back and it just, it feels like a bit of a weird positioning to have to reach over the whole unit to hit the shift button to access functionality that you do access quite often actually. So that's really the only weird design thing with the buttons that I just don't quite understand. But overall the build and feel of the fader and the buttons and the unit in general is really good and I'm very impressed. Now I wanna talk about the features and functionality and just things that I've noticed when using it with Pro Tools. Now, again, this is not a bash on the fader port. I've seen the features that it can do with other DAWs and it's absolutely amazing. And I think that if you're in other DAWs, it's probably great. But with Pro Tools, there are definitely some limitations and weird things. Part of it is the Pro Tools software itself. Part of it's the fader, well, most of it's Pro Tools itself and the Huey protocol not allowing us to do certain things. But some of these issues aren't even really issues. They're just things to be aware of when you're envisioning your workflow while using this thing. So first off, when you use this thing with Pro Tools, you have to go into the peripherals menu and add this thing as a controller with the Huey protocol and all that kind of stuff. The problem is that Pro Tools isn't very good at dealing with these controllers when they're not online when it starts up. So every single time I start up Pro Tools and the fader port is off, Pro Tools yells at me and says that it's not there. I have to remember to turn this thing on before I start Pro Tools, even if I have no intent in actually using it. So I turn it off a lot, but then I either have to keep adding it so the Pro Tools just starts up normally, or I have to just deal with this pop-up every single time or remember to turn it on. It's just a bit of a pain in the workflow when you don't need it on all the time and only want it on at specific times. You have to either keep re-adding it or deal with this pop-up every time. Now, the next thing, which is one of my biggest issues and pains with this thing, is that the Huey protocol deals with eight faders. It can't recognize a single fader. So it controls and seems like it's controlling eight faders in Pro Tools. Then you use the next and previous button to bank between tracks that you're using. There is no bank button to bank 
eight faders at a time because that's a Pro Tools problem, not a fader port problem. So it's quite a significant pain to get to the tracks that you need to control with this thing, especially when your session is like hundreds of tracks large. There's no bank button to go eight faders over and over and over. It's just one fader at a time. I really anticipated this thing being able to pop to the fader that I was controlling, but the problem is that it does that within the bank of eight. However, if you select a different fader that's not in that bank of eight, it doesn't switch the bank of eight and go to that place. You have to actually move the fader over to that new bank of eight and then select the fader that you want. Or on a Mac, you can hit control and shift and click on a track and it'll automatically bank there and make that the fader that you're controlling. But that means that every single time that I wanna switch faders or switch what the fader port is controlling, I have to remember to click on the track name with control and shift activated. It just doesn't jump to the fader that I have selected. So it can just be a real pain when you don't know what track you're controlling, you don't have buttons to bank between banks of eight, and then you have to figure out which track you're actually controlling in the session if you're somewhere else in the session and click to get it to go there with a shortcut and uh, it's just a lot of work. The other problem is that when you do the shift click to jump to that section, it also shifts what you're looking at on your actual screen. So again, another just annoyance in the workflow. Frankly, that's one of my biggest problems and nobody really talked about the fact that it doesn't just jump to where you are. So I really wanted to make that a big point. It's a pain to navigate your sessions in Pro Tools with the fader port. Now next is the flip button and the flip button to me, and I think it works this way in other DAWs, but the flip button makes me think that you can flip and use that to control sends on your track. However, it jumps to panning on the fader, but there's just no way to control the send volumes and send automation with this fader, which frankly, I really thought it would based on everything that I read and that I saw, because I believe it does it in other DAWs, but yet in Pro Tools, yet just, that's just not, doesn't seem to be a thing. And finally, all the different buttons on this thing. There are a ton of different buttons and in different DAWs, they serve a lot of different purposes and that's great. In Pro Tools, some of them work, some of them don't. And they just don't work, they just do nothing. It's not that they do something else, they just do nothing. Now that's fine, I wish they would kind of have a little bit more help to tell you what works and what doesn't in Pro Tools. But the other thing is, I wish I could map the unused buttons because there are quite a few of them then and the shift layer of all these buttons that some of them do and do not work. I wish I could map that to do things in Pro Tools, to open up plugins or make the fader control sends maybe, something else, but there is just no way to map the buttons. The unused buttons are literally just useless. I believe you can customize them in other DAWs, but you just can't do that in Pro Tools, so they're just kind of sitting there doing nothing. That would kind of help with the functions that are just not mapped in Pro Tools, so that you could help map them to MIDI CCs even, just something else. But unfortunately, I have not found a way yet, and it doesn't seem like anybody's talking about that. Now, a lot of this loss in functionality has to do with the Huey protocol, which is not Personas' fault. They made a great unit that does amazing stuff and in a compact, nice little container for a lot of different DAWs. But it's when it comes to Pro Tools and the Huey protocol, it just doesn't seem to be nearly as functional. So this is as much of a shout out and ask to Avid to open up Yukon or allow something to happen so that these units and units that other people make are just more functional with Pro Tools and allow us to do more with them. Because as much as I love Pro Tools and I've been using Pro Tools forever and it's an extension of my hands, looking at some of the functionality that some of these things can do with other DAWs definitely makes me think about what is possible with other DAWs when it comes to mixing and the speed of workflow. So please, Avid, open this up. Allow Personas to use Yukon or some something, make a deal somewhere to allow these things to be a little more functional. So the big question moving forward is, as a Pro Tools user, am I going to keep it? Or are these workflow functionality bugs or problems too much for me to bear? Or are they just things that I just have to get over and work around? Well, frankly, I am actively looking into seeing if there's a basically this, but an eight bank of this that's not stupidly expensive because I just wanna be able to bank and know which fader I'm actually controlling. So I am actively looking at other things because the functionality is definitely a bit of a pain, but at the end of the day, it does give me a really good feeling motorized fader. Because that was my whole goal when buying it, to have a, a tactical fader to do vocal automation, mostly. <laughs> I can deal with the weird workflow issues of navigating my session to have that still around. It won't be nearly as useful as I was hoping, but when it's useful, it's going to be very useful for the thing that I needed it for in the first place. So I'll probably still end up keeping it because so far I do like having it around. So that is it for this video. Those are my first impressions when using the fader port 
with Pro Tools and just the weird workflow issues that you're gonna have to deal with and have to look into. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below or if you use this and have workarounds to any of the things that I'm, I'm talking about or other suggestions, please leave them in the comments below and help all of us out. I would really appreciate that and I'm sure everybody else clicking on this video would too. So thanks so much for watching guys. I will see you in the next video. Until then, always be creating.